week we're going to talk about water conservation. But before I talk anymore, follow me. No, that's not really saving water. Let's go back in here. So you're probably wondering, why did I get a glass of water and then take you to the bathroom and I flush the toilet and turn the sink water on? Well, as gross as that might seem, what I was trying to do was capture your attention for this week's lesson. This time we're gonna talk about conserving or saving water. What I want you to understand is that water that I got from my refrigerator, the water that's in the toilet, the water that's in the sink, all that water comes from the same place. There's one pipe that leads to your home and all your fresh water comes in that way. I think a lot of times people think, oh, the toilet water, that's gross, or the sink water, but it's the same water. It's just coming out of a different location. We would never drink from the toilet, of course, but I just want you to understand that's the same water. And also, like we learned last week, the water that we use now has been around forever. So the people that use this water 5,000 years ago, we're still using the same water. That brings us to a scientific principle called a closed system. The hydrologic system or cycle is a closed system. And what that means is there's nothing added or taken away from the water cycle. Every year when I talk about this, the kids say, uh, Miss Dudley, we drink water and we make food with water. We're using water. Well, yes, we are. And we're drinking that just like I'm drinking my water. But what's going to happen in a few minutes or a few hours after you eat and drink? Yeah, you go to the bathroom. So that water now is coming out of your body to wherever, and then that water then is being reused, cleaned, and distributed again for our use. So just keep in mind, water cycle closed system, this is a key word for this week, and all the water that we used has always been around. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is actually how much water is available for us to use. So I've prepared a visual for you here to show you how much water is actually usable. So there's 100 squares there that we painted blue to look like the ocean, and 71% of the earth is covered in water. However, there's very little that we can actually use. For fresh water, we have 2.5%, so 2.5 squares of water that's fresh. So for those of you that are great at math, you can figure out the rest of the water is salt water, unusable. And we'll talk about that later because you say, why can't we take the salt out? But you'll learn about that later this week. But of this fresh water, there's still, we can't use a lot of it because it's frozen. That brings us down to 1% of all the Earth's water that is actually usable for us. That's not just for the United States of America. That's for the whole world. For the 7 billion people that live here on this planet, we have 1% water that we have to share. So as we go through things this week, keep that in mind as we talk about groundwater, the rain, and how all this water plays a factor in our usable water. So lucky for me, it's raining today. And as you can see, the water is pulled up by my sidewalk and it kind of has a little path that follows. So we're gonna follow that path across the driveway to a drain. Now this drain is here so our driveway doesn't flood and go into the garage. And my husband has made this drain where it will take all this water to the backyard and then eventually down to the creek. So let's just take a walk down there right now. And as you can see here, the ground is saturated with water, so it's pooling up. So that does contribute to our groundwater and runoff and all the other things that we talked about last week for the water cycle. And here's another example of runoff. The water from the house going down the gutters. And it's going down and away from the house so it doesn't cause damage. So in our backyard, this is the end of that drain. From the front yard to the back, you can see the water pool. 
and it does lead down to the creek. So we're going to slowly walk to the creek. It is quite messy out here. Notice the little path. Looks like a little river. Ooh, this is really messy. And let's look at the creek. Many times, well, most of the time in the summer, this is dry. But with all the rain we've had, you can see all the water flowing. I'm not sure how deep it is, it'd be kind of dangerous. But this is fresh water. So the rain comes back down as fresh water, even if it's evaporated over the oceans. Could you drink that water? Well, not really. You have to boil it for 20 minutes or so, but it's still, it's still fresh water. So the creek here, this really shows us a good picture of the water cycle and how the water just drains into everything. So it hasn't rained for about 24 hours and this is what that same creek looks like. It's really peaceful and also the water is a lot clearer than yesterday. It was pretty muddy when it was flowing down there. So, I hope my video this week gets you excited for learning about conserving water and saving water. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>